Ice Maiden on Ice Mummies, a Nova miniseries. Wednesday at 8 p.m. Local support of this program is made possible by DebtNews.com, the Detroit News Online. Read it, understand it, use it all day, every day. From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American Original. Verizon is proud to support the McLaughlin Group. From small businesses to large enterprises, Verizon's data solutions are helping businesses everywhere in the U.S. make progress every day. Available on the web at verizon.com slash data. Wherever the road leads, wherever the journey takes you, travel well. And by Pfizer, dedicated to helping people live longer, happier, healthier lives. Here's your host, John McLaughlin. Issue one, what's the status K? We have not found at this point actual weapons. Does not mean we've concluded there are no actual weapons. It means at this point in time, and it's a huge country with a lot to do, that we have not yet found weapons. His interim report said, uh, that Iraq's weapons of mass destruction program spanned more than two decades. That's what he said. See, he's over there in the difficult circumstances and reports back. He says that the WMD program involved thousands of people, billions of dollars, and was elaborately shielded by security and deception operations that continued even beyond the end of Operation Iraqi Freedom. After three months and $300 million, David Kay the chief Iraq weapons inspector for the United States has come back empty-handed. Kay told Congress on Thursday that he has found no evidence of biological, chemical, or nuclear weapons. The stockpile that the Bush administration boldly advanced as the reason for invading and occupying Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Mr. Kay now says that he wants six to nine more months to complete the inspection process. And the Bush administration wants to give him, get this, another $600 million. Nearly bringing the total for the search for weapons of mass destruction to a staggering $1 billion. Congressional members on both sides of the aisle are alarmed and despondent over the ongoing hunt for weapons. I'm not pleased uh, by what I heard today. Uh, but we should be willing to adopt a wait-and-see attitude. Uh, that's the only alternative we really have. If you're going to go to war, and you're going to take the American nation to war, and thus endanger um, lives of citizens, American and others, all over the world because of something called the War on Terrorism, um, then you need, to, you need to be fairly certain about certain dangers. And now we find that uh, nothing is available. No weapons of mass destruction. Question. Chief Inspector K reported that Iraq may, at some future date, have intended to resume programs to develop weapons of mass destruction. Does that justify war? Lawrence Kudlow. Yeah, I think it does. I mean, the key word is intent and development. Efforts to develop these weapons were found in, in laboratories, in the homes of scientists, in military caches. And I think you have to go back to Bush's original statement. His war aim was designed to prevent an immediate threat, an imminent threat. That was the key point. You can't wait for the threat to materialize. And furthermore, Saddam is a little Hitler. He's Milosevic to the 10th power. He was maiming and gassing and killing women and children and everyone else. He was a dangerous guy and he should have been taken out. And they should still hunt for more weapons, in my opinion. The story may not be over. Eleanor, how do you like the rewrite of the K report by Lawrence Kudlow? 
<laughs> it's the same rewrite that President Bush did. I mean, he took a report that said there's no evidence of weapons of mass destruction and took it as vindicating his position that there were weapons, might have been weapons, and therefore justified uh, the war. Frankly, the more we know about the way evidence was manipulated in the run-up to this war, this looks like the most expensive and the most elaborate coup d'etat in history. All we did was remove Saddam Hussein from power. And as we do the cost-benefit analysis of this war, people are really coming to grips with the fact that it wasn't worth it, and the polls are reflecting that. Tony, you know, the, the, the Nazi... Uh, atomic bomb project was never put together. It didn't stop us doing the Manhattan Project, spending extraordinary amounts of efforts, because the moment that they had it, th that was when millions would start dying. What they, what we, what we, everybody knows they had, and what this confirms, is they had all the mechanisms and plans to put it together. They hadn't weaponized them so far that we have any evidence. They had the intent. They, they had more than the intent. They had the, they had the chemicals, they had the programs, they had the laboratories, but they, they didn't put them all together. It doesn't take long to put mm. it together. The moment they put it together, we're in very big trouble. So, of course, this was the right course of action. Now, uh, just so you, people don't get uh, confused by any uh, double speak here, this is your newspaper. This is the Washington Times of Friday. <laughs> evidence found, uh, evidence of arms intent, in quote, found. Yeah. Now, intent, of course, here we're into subjectivity. No. no uh, do we need a psychologist you, at this point? When, no. Should this be handled by a... Should no. we get a psychiatric let, report? Let, let me give you an to answer. To determine what the intent was? No. Now, wait a minute. Just to... Just to just there's to evidence... Just, there's ev just to justify sure, your no. newspaper, your next sentence has it right. Weapons still elude U.S. No. team. No. Is that clear? It's very clear. Do you want... Let me explain. There's evidence of intent, and the evidence of intent is a laboratory to make the darn right. stuff, and the bottles of botulism right. and all the rest they have. Right. Why do they have that? For their health? And all no, that I don't was so. oh, and no, all that was concealed. The all that was concealed from the United Nations, and all that put him in violation of a dozen resolutions. So let's not forget that, John. Do you think that we have cause for going to war on the basis of what we heard here from uh, Kay? You know, I'm really glad it wasn't my job at the Washington Times that day to write a headline with the word evidence and found in the, in the same <laughs> and headline. I, don't think I, we'll I, I, I would have gotten fired. I would not have been able to come up with what goes between those words. Uh, look, what's, what's very clear at this point is that the war was dramatically oversold by the administration. Colin Powell at the United Nations was telling us about very specific intelligence. They were showing us these things. We know exactly where they are. Those things were not what Colin Powell said they were. We did not find anything. We have found nothing. I am all in favor of David Kay spending as much money as he wants and taking as long as he wants to continue to prove the presidential claims about this war to be false. Uh, That's what his job is. Apparently what Eleanor says is taking hold. This is a New York Times CBS poll conducted Sunday through Wednesday of this week. Before the White House criminal probe began, and before David Kay's WMD report. The poll question is as follows. Are the results of the war in Iraq worth the loss of life and other costs or not? Get this. 53% not worth it. 41% worth it. Another poll question put by the Times. Then we'll have a discussion here on the set. Do you have confidence in Bush? to deal wisely with an international crisis, or are you uneasy? April, 66% confident, 31% uneasy. Now, 45% confident, 50% uneasy. Eleanor, how do you feel about that poll? Do you think it's making your point? Well, I think the president has lost a lot of credibility, and he lost much of it over the exaggeration of evidence going into Iraq. He's lost part of it also because the tax, enormous tax cuts he put through Congress have not revived the economy. And you've got numbers that show millions more Americans are without health insurance, the poverty rate is rising, and all of these discrete events taken together uh, make this administration the look economy. like they are not the economy up to is the job. Back. The economy is coming back. But John, can I raise a point, please? Intelligence agencies all over the world, in Europe, throughout the United Nations, believed in the weapons of mass destruction issue, active weapons, okay? So you've got to question the intelligence, but everyone believed that. And in retrospect, an argument that was made by a small band of people regarding human rights it's the Saddam Milosevic comparison that I'm talking about. We dumped Milosevic on human rights. 
I think that we would have been better advised to have taken Statham out on exactly the, the same basis. Let, 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 let Tony speak. Let me say, regarding the poll question, it's a valid question, I think the poll is probably largely accurate. I think it catches the, a snapshot of what people are thinking. You think today. it's bad news? For Bush? Of course it's not, not good news. However... Is it I, bad news? How bad is it? I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> you can't spin a successful or unsuccessful war. At some point before no, next November, the public will come to judgment of whether this war was a success in the aftermath. If it is, the president's going to be in good shape. Mm. If it's not in the public's judgment, then he's going to be in bad shape. A poll right now, after months of difficulties getting started in the rebuilding effort in Iraq, obviously you would expect to have our numbers just about the way we see them. Uh, the the problem is that the president should have known going into this that the real judgment on whether this was a smart thing to do is going to take at least 30 years. It's, we're 30 years out from knowing whether we've increased terrorism as a result of this or not. Therefore, to enter the war, it should have been done scrupulously, honestly, with the information they had. They could have said, he's violated the United Nations uh, prohibition in, in terms of uh, reporting to us uh, what he should be doing in reporting to us. That's enough. And they should have stopped there. Exit and question. Picking this off uh, what uh, Lawrence, uh, Lawrence, uh, Lawrence on the side of me and Lawrence on this side of me, I'm Lorenzified. You are indeed. Uh, this is from Lawrence O'Donnell, picking up, picking up from where he left off on one point. Exit question. Kay wants another $600 million to keep looking for weapons of mass destruction. Should Congress give it to him, yes or no? Lawrence Cousins. I think absolutely yes. I think we are going to find more things which were concealed. And furthermore, I would add, the Iraqi story is doing much better than it's being reported in the media, and that's going to really help Bush's numbers down the road. Hello. I read that the number of attacks on American troops have escalated and the things are getting worse. Well, I, there's a difference of agreement. The message, difference a of difference of agreement. Uh, I think they should take the, uh, the money out of the $87 billion. And if they don't find anything that's good news for the world, bad news for Bush politics. Tony. I think they need to spend about as much as they need to spend to decide it one way or the other. I agree with Larry. So we're only up to $166 billion now, right? Look, we spend about $40 billion a year now in intelligence in this country. I am happy to have David Kay spend another half a billion to prove how bad our yeah, intelligence is and how much money that's we're a, wasting that's on That's a great point. Uh, I really agree with that. The answer is no. Congress should not give them the authority. There are many countries with weapons, uh, dis weapons uh, stockpiles. And uh, Iraq uh, standing among them is a minor, was a minor threat. Issue two, White House criminal probe. I find that really reprehensible that uh, somebody being paid a, a salary by the taxpayer would use their time uh, to avenge uh, uh, themselves against somebody who told the truth uh, rather than do the nation's business. An independent investigation of this despicable matter must be undertaken immediately. It must be thorough and it must be beyond question in terms of the vigor with which it is pursued. A firestorm ignited at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue this week. A senior White House official made public the name of an undercover CIA agent and in doing so committed a felony. That's the story, the background. Joseph Wilson, ambassador to African nation of Gabon, 1992 to 95, went on assignment last year to the Central African nation of Niger. The CIA told Wilson to find out whether Saddam Hussein had tried to buy uranium from that country. Wilson reported back that he found no such evidence, and that report, when Wilson made it known, radically undermined the Bush justification for war against Iraq. Nevertheless, Ago, President Bush cited the Niger story uh, in a State of the Union address as a basis for an Iraqi invasion. Wilson believes that the White House was so irked by his going public with the Niger debunking that they leaked the identity of his wife, an undercover CIA intelligence officer involved in classified work, to columnist Robert Novak, to punish Wilson through her. Once outed, Wilson's wife could no longer function undercover. Wilson also believes it was done to silence criticism of the administration from others on the inside of the security agencies on other foreign policy issues. Experts believe the leaker will be found. Question. Why would someone in the White House 
choose to deliberately disclose the name of an undercover CIA official to the press. I ask you, Lawrence O'Donnell. Well, it's really stupid, so you have to struggle for motivation here. But I think Joe Wilson has the only mo motivation that makes any sense to me when he says what they were doing was trying to scare anyone in the future who gets any ideas of talking the way he did. I mean, he tells you that, that he feels that they, he didn't think they could really threaten him, but he, was, that, but he believes that they were laying this down as a marker. If you do this kind of thing, we're going to get Do you think this. others were ready to come forward? Was there general discontent in the intelligence community I think others with, with, have the, come with, with the foreign the, with the foreign policy of uh, particularly Mr. Rumsfeld? I think part of the reason we have this story today is that others have come forward. The CIA is upset with the way this administration has used their information and they are pursuing this investigation but I, I i think that uh it's an odd story because the husband wilson wasn't a member of the cia so why did the cia send him the answer is his wife and apparently novak on his side says he was really pursuing the motive for the cia to send wilson wilson has become a john Kerry democratic activist it was well, dick cheney's idea right. to it, have someone go just, there and it raises, that's where it came it from it raises it was not cheney's idea it was it, it raises, came out of a cheney meeting but not wilson wilson wasn't cheney's no, idea no they just yeah. to get and someone it raises over this there. problem there seem to be political cliques inside the cia political what cliques cliques yeah. cliques which are bound and determined to leak and attack George Bush left um, and right. And look, we're seeing more and more. You're making, like it, sound like, you're making it sound like a trip to Niger is a boondoggle. It, uh, <laughs> well, Ambassador it Wilson was an wasn't much of a report. He discredited the yellow cake uranium uh, idea. And if the administration had drinks. listened One to it, it would have saved out them true. embarrassment. And you have to deal with well, that the fact. Brits they say ended uh, his, uh, they uh, uh, Hold on, Lawrence. They, let, let the they lady finish. ended his wife's career in an effort to silence other people. And the intelligence establishment is very upset as to how the political people have misused intelligence to further their a yeah. political agenda. That is the larger issue Look, here. But I want to know. her identity is a serious business. I want to know how serious. I, 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 I don't approve of leaking her identity. Lawrence, hold on, please. Lawrence, hold on. How, long, how serious is this rap? Oh, I think it's very serious. Look, there are a lot of issues here. The first issue that, that the president should be concerned with is that somebody on his staff, presumably, we don't know for sure, presumably, did an absolutely despicable act, and the president needs to personally do everything he can as soon as possible to get to the bottom of it. He wasn't involved right, in does, some staffer. Now, having said that... Does the lady in question fall under the act in question? I, I, it looks like she does. The question is what about she, the five-year rule? Whether she's been rule. outside five years, we don't know the move. This this is less important than than. Well, the, isn't that the distinction between a felony and a non-felony? This is con whoever leaked it has to worry about that. The rest of us right, does Novak have to worry about it? No, no, Novak's not covered because there are only two categories of people covered. One authorized possessors of the yeah. information. Well, why do you other agents. why do you support Novak's judgment in this and, and revealing I, the name? I don't. Would you have revealed it in the editorial pages of the Washington no. Times? And I've no said one so, told and I've Novak said so. that there was no, a crime Novak had the, had the legal right to do it. It was I would not personally in that position have done it. But is he, he had internally right is he internally it. consistent with his own position? You know what I mean? He's having a little trouble with. Any t that's the saying that's the trouble with management scandal management now, this, is you forget what you said three months ago. The thing is, the buzz ago. in Washington already has there are names out there. Uh, it, there's great suspicion as to which office in the White House this came out of. Okay, and I, the president I, I, could end this in a look, minute let, if he I actually gotta, let's called get out, Let's get out on an exit, <laughs> on a, on a, on a, as an exit uh, question, on a scandal scale from zero to ten. Zero meaning no scandal whatsoever, a tempest in a teapot, and ten meaning Watergate, a mother of a scandal. How big is this one? 3.5. 3.5. Eleanor. It's a seven or an eight. Really? Still room to Tony, grow. <laughs> if it's resolved promptly, it's about a three, but if it goes on, it's at least an eight. It's gone from a six to a seven in the last couple of days. Its capacity to go down rests on the fact that in the statute, the person who's delivering the information has to know that the CIA is actively trying to hide the identity of this person. It is very unlikely that an amateur in the White House would know the words of that statute. You have to know the words in order to violate it. Who said an amateur? This is a senior official. It, but if it's a CIA official, then they do but know the words. But according to Novak's official. account, and this is important, the, the CIA confirmed to Novak who she was. And that's why I think it may not be such a covert. That's right. uh, the answer is it's a five. Issue three, Arnold Rock. He knows he's in trouble, and he's going to run a dirty campaign this week.
It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. We are in the trenches. Well, Arnold, you're right. Five days before the recall election, the L.A. Times published the story of six women accusing Schwarzenegger of lewd conduct. According to the Times, three of the women described their surprise when Schwarzenegger grabbed their breasts. A fourth said he reached under her skirt and gripped her buttocks. A fifth said Schwarzenegger groped her and tried to remove her bathing suit. A sixth said he pulled her onto his lap and asked whether a certain sexual act had ever been performed on her. One of the alleged incidents occurred in the 70s, two in the 80s, two in the 90s, one in 2000. The Times says that the women did not seek out the Times. Rather, the Times sought out the women. Arnold at first dismissed the story as trash politics, but then soldiered through his mea culpa. A lot of those who have seen the stories is not true. But at the same time, I have to tell you that I always say that wherever there's smoke, there's fire. That is true. And so what I want to say to you is, is that yes, that I have behaved badly sometimes. Yes, it is true that I was on rowdy movie sets and I have done things that were not right, which I thought then was playful, but now I recognize that I have offended people. And to those people that I have offended, I want to say to them, I'm deeply sorry about that, and I apologize, because this is not what I try to do. I, when I am governor, I want to prove to the women that I will be a champion for the women, a champion of the women. No police reports and no civilian complaints have been filed by any of these women. Question, will these disclosures terminate the Terminator, yes or no, Lawrence Kudlow? No, but he's not in much great shape as he was a few days ago. Lawrence O'Donnell. Uh, he's in big trouble. This is, everybody in Hollywood has heard these stories for many, many, many years. Everybody you talk to will s says this is the tip of the iceberg. That's why he had to apologize. Those six stories in the LA Times were not terribly powerful in and of themselves. If that's all that was out there, Arnold actually could have gotten from here to Tuesday with a denial. He knew. He knew he had to apologize because he knows there's a lot more than that out there. You can't walk onto a movie set in L.A. and ask the crew, do you have an Arnold story of that kind without seeing four or five hands go up? Tony. It's bad. It's widespread. Tony. Everybody in Hollywood yeah, well, knows it, about it. It's very distasteful behavior. I can't judge. It's clearly slowed the momentum. Uh, taking it off stride, I can't judge whether it's damaging enough to, to stop. He clearly was mo surging forward prior to the story. It looked like he was building up a 7 to 12 point lead. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Well, there's another word for what he calls playful. It's called assault when you read those, uh, those details. But this reminds me of the revelation... Wait, hold on, please. Go ahead, please go on. It re reminds me of the revelation about candidate George Bush's uh, drunk driving arrest in the final weekend of the 2000 campaign. This is, these are the kind of charges that make people rethink whether this person has the standing and the character they want for somebody uh, okay. in office. Uh, from the AP. Women, uh, he, uh, women are not his core constituency, but he's going to lose a lot of women. On I want to somehow shoehorn this in. From the AP Wire, an alleged interview uh, from a 1975 unpublished book proposal attributes this quote to Schwarzenegger. He was then 28 years old, and he was a young bodybuilder. Quote, I admired Hitler, for instance, because he came from being a little man with almost no formal education up to power, unquote. Uh, what about that? Um, There's a second part of that story where Schwarzenegger d denies that he said that, but the actual interview. He doesn't deny. Let's get straight. Actual, he says, I don't recall, he don't recall saying it. it. That's he knows right. that it's on film and, and the, that it's in a transcript. But the he cannot deny it. He got caught. The interviewer does say that what he was allegedly referring to was Hitler's speaking style. I think it was a big mistake. It was 25 years ago. There aren't a lot of governors the, in the United States the, who had to get over their the, admiration what, the for point Hitler's I speaking make is, style. Be, in, in, besides in saying, Schwarz I don't recall, what did he say about Hitler? What did in, he say about Nazism? In Schwarz he says they are detestable. That's I detest right. them. And he's been active in Jewish charities and philanthropies and human rights. Look, who said God, that? Did a leading Jewish clergyman say that? A leading, a leader among the Jewish I mean, As a matter of fact, he was a leader. He has given is handsomely he's through the years been to the Jews. He's been straight up. He's been honest. He's been candid. He's not blaming the women the way some other politicians of recent days. He's saying that he, he, he says, he's I'm sorry. Then honest. he says, 
some of what they're saying right. isn't true. Well, he, his, remember true. his defense about uh, the things he said in the past. His defense about the things he said in the past is, I am a liar. I didn't, those things I said in the past were a lie. Well, the question. thing I believe about him is that he's a liar. Exit question. We've got to get this in. Will he be derailed? Yes or no, and that's all. Will he be derailed by this? No. Answer, yes or no. That's no, a no. I really don't know. That's a no. That's a no. The Hollywood inside crowd hates him. He's going to try. I think they fail, and he probably s sneaks by winning. Yes the or no? The most wildly lying American politician on policy and his past will probably be California's next governor. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is he will not be derailed. Issue four, French Connection. Jacques Chirac greeted First Lady Laura Bush during her stopover in Paris this week with open arms and puckered lips. President Bush and President Chirac may have had their differences over war in Iraq, but that didn't stop the French president from gallantly kissing the hand of Mrs. Bush, both on her arrival and departure from the French palace. The video and photography was perfectly timed, and the Mona Lisa expression on the First Lady's face was picture perfect much to the delight of world media, where the images traveled and worked their diplomatic magic. Question, diplomatic magic is the important phrase. This was rigged. It was rigged on both sides of the Atlantic. Chirac was told, two kisses on the hand. She was told, make it friendly. We want to link our nations once again. We want to bring old Europe back into our basket. True or false? Well, that, but that is who he is. I mean, he, he is a, a, a really, everybody who knows him, and I know people who do, he's a really nice guy, and that's the way he would have done it anyway. Do you have a thought? Yeah, she was kissed by a frog, but he didn't turn into a prince. <laughs> uh, she was polite. He did what the French do, and it's was a it meaningless a trip. Predictions, Lawrence. The terminating partial birth abortion in the House will pass the Senate, thankfully and blessedly. Eleanor. The Republican State Party platform in Texas will become an embarrassment for hometown boy George Bush. Quickly. Senator Nichols will probably not run for re-election. If uh, Schwarzenegger does win, he will not be re-elected. <laughs> the nation is beginning to sour on globalization and will incline towards a neo-isolationism, neo but narrowly miss it. Bye-bye. Wherever the journey takes you, travel well. Verizon is proud to support the McLaughlin Group. From small businesses to large enterprises, Verizon's data solutions are helping businesses everywhere in the U.S. make progress every day. Available on the web at verizon.com slash data. And by Pfizer, dedicated to helping people live longer, happier, healthier lives. Local support of this program is made possible by DebtNews.com, the Detroit News Online. Read it, understand it, use it all day, every day. Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates, AFL-CIO President John J. Sweeney, Secretary of Commerce Donald Evans, and many other national newsmakers are coming to Detroit Public Television by way of the Detroit Economic Club. Now you can hear the cutting-edge information from this elite group. Watch our new series of speeches from the Detroit Economic Club, Sundays at 12.30 p.m., beginning October 5th. Expect a masterpiece. This play is called Our Town. Academy Award winner Paul Newman plays the stage manager in Thornton Wilder's Pulitzer Prize-winning play. Mom, am I good-looking? Try and remember what it was like when you were very young. Exxon Mobil Masterpiece Theater's American Collection presents... This is the way we were. Our Town. Sunday at 9 p.m. The Mayor's Town Hall Meeting, Redefining Reform, will be rebroadcast Sunday, October 5th at 1 p.m. on Detroit Public Television.
Next time on American Family. I would like you to meet George Burnett, founder and owner of G&B Pro. We are not only interested in your jacket. We want to make this deal a long and profitable relationship. The unit cost is too high, Nancy. We're going to run out of money before we can make the delivery to G&B Pro. We have to...